Buddy, that's Eleanor's spot. You know that. Buddy. Yes, you. That's Eleanor's spot. You don't care in the least. Nope, not at all. <laughs> Look at her. Isn't she funny? Look at the way she just hangs. Crazy. A little dim in here. Make sure the wings are covered. Hey there, hi there, ho there. So I just got to the airport. Got a great parking spot. Today was lovely. It was a lovely day. The weather was beautiful. Um, the cats were both in great moods. Very, very sweet. I did leave the house to buy some snacks and some groceries. Went to one Goodwill. There was nothing in there. So I went back home, hung out, watched some YouTube videos, and we all jumped in bed and snuggled for a little while. Took a little nap in preparation for my red eye this evening. I don't have a red eye this evening. <laughs> I looked at, I have to be at the airport at 8.40. I have to be at the gate at 8.40. But I thought our first leg of this trip was going to be to um, Newark. It's to Oakland. It's not to Newark. We're going to Newark the next day. Uh, so tonight is a lot easier than I thought it would be. There was, there was no need for a nap, trust me, because I'm just flying from Vegas to Oakland. Yeah, super easy. Uh, we got a 21, 22 hour layover there. I don't know what I'm going to do. The weather is supposed to be pretty nice, so I might go into the city. I was also thinking of going back to um, Cat's Meow because I just love that place. Um, but um, I might go into the city. I don't know. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, and then we've got a nine something showtime the next evening. So. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Then we have a long Newark layover. We have one leg to Newark the next day. We've got 23, 24 hours in Newark. And then on day four of the trip, we've got three legs, one leg to Vegas. And then we have a penalty lap to Reno. Uh, so that's going to be a fairly <laughs> gross day. But all in all, a very easy trip. It looks like I'm going to be flying position C because I think... Um, Petra, the person who I'll be flying with, who's senior to me, might fly lead. Uh, so I will fly C. And C, uh, position C in my airline uh, is the aft galley. Uh, so that's what I think I will do. And I will ask Petra to play all the announcements. So I really don't have to do anything. That would be very nice. All right, I'm going to get to the airport, grab a cup of coffee or a little snack or a little nibble or something. And I will see you either at the plane or in Oakland. All right, see ya. Oh, that was a very nice flight. It was short. Now we're in 11 minutes. My chaser's amazing. Shay, she's awesome. She used to be Vegas-based. Now she's in Atlanta. Um, Sam is our B. She's leaving us tomorrow, though. It's just me and Petra for the trip. We'll get new crew members tomorrow. I mean, yeah, tomorrow night. Uh, nice trip. Super easy. Um, we did have this lovely couple, that lovely young couple, and their baby was very, very special needs. Um, I guess they had to have oxygen, a feeding tube, and you know they had to suction, you know, saliva and I mean, whatever. The poor thing, completely unresponsive. I mean, but it was very sad, very sad. But uh, yeah, a nice flight. So we're gonna rush to the hotel uh, and then get to sleep. My goal is to wake up fairly early in the morning, get breakfast, and then maybe go into the city. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. I'll see you there at the hotel. Blink, blink. Ugh. Ugh. I'm tired, guys. Hi. So I didn't get to sleep until about two o'clock this morning. I just couldn't get to sleep. I was just not sleepy. I was prepared for a red eye. <laughs> But, um, so I got to sleep about 2 o'clock this morning. I woke up at 8.30 uh, to go over and take advantage of breakfast. They've changed a few things in our hotel here that I'm not happy with. They're small details, but I just, um, they don't have bottles of water for us when we get to the hotel. Usually they did. They, they would give us as many as we really wanted. Or they would be two in the hotel room. There are two in the hotel room, but they charge for them now. Uh, and uh, housekeeping won't even give us extra waters. Uh, and for breakfast, we used to have a, a option for a cold buffet, which was free, 
or if you wanted to upgrade to a hot breakfast, like a breakfast burrito or something, it would cost us an additional $5 to upgrade to that. And now that's not even an option anymore. It's just the cold buffet. So yeah, just little things, but that, that, that does make a difference in terms of my experience on my layover. Uh, it's only about 57 degrees outside. I'll show you my outfit of the day and yeah, I should have, I should have brought pants. Honestly, I should have brought pants, but I just, I'm just, I, for me, it's already summer. So I just put short, I just brought shorts. So, um, this is the shoe. This is the shoe I'm wearing. It's a, uh, um, Kohan. I have a lot of Kohan. Beautiful, beautiful loafer. Beautiful loafer. I love this shoe. And I wore this sweater yesterday. I'm not sure if you can really see it. It's just a, uh, this Abercrombie, uh, you can get a better view of the fabric, though. It's like a sun-faded navy uh, shawl slash roll collar. I'm not quite sure, but I uh, love that. With this uh, pink and blue shirt I bought the other day uh, at Goodwill. This is at 1901 with some Banana Republic shorts and those loafers. So feeling cute. I'm hoping it's enough, uh, warm enough. Uh, for San Francisco. I'm thinking of going into the Castro District. I've never been before. I know, as gay as I am, I've never been to the Castro District in in, in San Francisco. Oh, these shoes are so comfortable. Oh my God, it's like putting on slippers. All right, I will see you guys uh, at breakfast. All right, breakfast was more generous than I thought it would be. It was a continental breakfast buffet, which was oatmeal, fruit, pastries, uh, coffee, juice, just perfect. They were going to let us upgrade to a hot breakfast buffet for $9, but hotel eggs and a couple strips of bacon, I wasn't in the mood. So I was fine with a continental breakfast. I do want a regular coffee uh, somewhere when I get into the city. It's a little hazy. You can see out in the hills, it's a little hazy. Here comes the little shuttle. And I've got two clipper cards. I don't know how I ended up with two. Uh, but I gotta find out how much I have on each of these. But uh, let's go into the city. Whoosh! Oh, that's my train. Oh, gotta run. Made it. The next station is best Uber driver ever. I, I mean, that was the nicest conversation I have ever had with an Uber driver. So nice. He looked 20 years old, but he was 45. Uh, he's from Peru originally. He's been here for 29 years and just had the most amazing conversation. But I am down in the Castro. I've never been here before. Um, I was asking him, him if the Castro was still gay, like a gay neighborhood. And he, yeah, 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 you'll see there are gay flags everywhere. And you can see down there. And all the signs kind of hint at, you know, the rainbow flag and stuff. And this looks very much like Provincetown, Massachusetts, actually, if you've ever been. That's what it kind of feels like. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, the Castro has suffered the same, the same thing other sort of gay neighborhoods have suffered is the fact that with equality comes dispersal. dispersal. So, you know, if you're no longer have to stay in one neighborhood for your own safety, which is what it was like. Um, now we can go anywhere you want to and you're, for the most part, pretty safe. There's no reason to have gay neighborhoods anymore. And I love the fact that I'm more equal than I used to be, but I do miss the sense of community that we used to have in these gay neighborhoods. But I'm gonna take a walk around, see what's what's up, find a cup of coffee, um, maybe do some, uh, I don't know, boy watching, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's a beautiful day, beautiful day. Well, I'll tell you, if Castro isn't as gay as it used to be, it must have been amazing because <laughs> it's still pretty damn gay. Uh, oh my God, Randy, Randy, if you're watching, look. Hi, Bubby. Hi, oh, I love you. I feel bad you're in that little window. It must be so hot. Hi, honey. Hi. Oh my God. They're beautiful. It's a pet spa. So they're, I guess that's where they're waiting. It's a waiting room for this pet spa. But um, if this neighborhood 
isn't as gay as it used to be. Wowzers, it must have been a real party, I'll tell you. Uh, I'm glad it came down. There is a museum I'm gonna go to in a few minutes when they open up. But for the time being, I'm just gonna walk around. Uh, there is a, uh, there are more uh, sex shops than I've seen in a long time. That's outside of like uh, New York. This is the greatest number of sex shops I've really ever seen. <laughs> I'm not going in any of them, but yeah. So I found this little museum. Really, really fascinating. It's small, but it's really fascinating capturing bits and pieces of gay history. But, um, you know, so much of the our history is ephemeral. It just passes and, and there's very little hard copies of bits and pieces of uh, LGBT history. But this place is keeping some of that alive. Wasn't I just talking about this? Lost Queering Landscapes. This is talking about three neighborhoods that were known as primarily gay neighborhoods and how they've changed and disappeared for the most part. But very interesting. The original rainbow flag. The original had eight stripes originally. And this is the piece they thought it was missing for like 40 years. And that is the last remaining fragment of the original pride flag. This flyer really brings back a lot of horrible memories. Again, something I'll tell you about later on outside, but been beaten lately. Because uh, there were a time, there was a time when it was socially acceptable to beat up gay people and I have uh, received those beatings myself but this is an um, exhibit uh, regarding the assassination of Harvey Milk first openly gay person to be elected in public office in California of course he was murdered because of it gay activists becomes the target or the potential target for somebody who is insecure, terrified, afraid, or very disturbed themselves. And knowing that uh, I could be assassinated at any moment or any time, I feel it's important that some people know my thoughts. <sighs> I found a Starbucks shocker, right? Uh, so I'm gonna grab a little caffeine before I make my way over to Folsom Street because I've never been, right? So we'll check it out, but uh, it's about a mile away. So we'll see how these shoes work with no socks on a mile long trek. Yay. That was the second gayest Starbucks I've ever been to. The first most gay Starbucks I've been to is in Wilton Manors <laughs> in Fort Lauderdale. But uh, I am on the way to uh, Folsom Street, which is famous for a particular fair, if you know, you know. Oh, look, Castro Country Club, a sober community center. Interesting. They sell Pete's coffee. I'm curious. I wonder what that is. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful area. What's that? This just seems like something out of Sim City or something. It's such an unusual combination of thoroughfares like just this this road that goes all the way up at such a high degree uh and then you can see those those wooden timber things over there those are outdoor seating for a restaurant there's this gigantic antenna kind of space age thing hanging out in the background then this train comes out of nowhere next to this park it's just a very strange sort of I don't know it looks it just looks like a puzzle that's sort of been spilled out onto the floor very unusual ah beautiful beautiful day and here we're on Mission Street very very different flavor to the city here all right I think I'm right around here in terms of the city here uh, I'm going to walk around for a little bit longer and then head back down towards where I know where I'm going. <laughs> I know that area over there pretty well. 
This is uh, Folsom Street. I don't know what I was expecting. It's just a little neighborhood, but uh, this street is home to the Folsom Street Festival, which I do not heartily suggest none of you Google, especially Google image, uh, if, unless you're in my LGBT community because uh, some of those images might be a little, a little startling and very colorful. And for some of you, terrifying. Others, really exciting. But um, that is Folsom Street. I think in the autumn, they have uh, the Folsom Street Fair or Festival or something. So I might come down and check it out. It's a different outfit for that festival, but blah, blah, blah. I think I'm going to take a little bit more of a walk around the neighborhood and then, uh, oh, macaron. <gasps> yeah, there's a little bakery over there. And then um, I think I might just head back eventually to the hotel room because I want to take a nap before tonight's flight to Newark. All right, so I just jumped in an Uber. The driver was from South Sudan. You meet people from all over the world. Uh, I am down by the ferry building. I was considering going down there for a sandwich lunch, but I've got plenty of food in my hotel room. So I'm gonna jump on the train and head back towards the airport and then get the shuttle from there to, uh, to the hotel. So I've had a very nice day here, very nice day. So the shuttle is on its way from the hotel. It should be here in just a couple minutes. I'm very grateful. My feet are killing me. Certainly not the shoes to wear all day long without socks. Um, but um, I was going to tell you more about some of the things I saw at that museum today. It was difficult to speak out loud. In fact, there were a couple times I was whispering. You might not have heard me. Uh, but... Um, the museum is one small room. It was not very large, and there's not a lot of things in there. $10 to get in, by the way, well worth it. Uh, but there's, there's just not a lot of, of hard, concrete things that you could put in the museum for the LGBT community in that so much of our history has been of us hiding to survive. And then it's just just a crazy, crazy little room full of very unusual objects that were very emotional to me. Um, I wanted to share some things about my history, my experience with some of the things in the room, but it, I couldn't speak out loud because the space felt sacred to me when I, when I was there. There were two other people in the room, quiet, silent, by themselves, just viewing things and not filming. Uh, so I, w I wasn't able to actually talk out loud about some of the things I saw there, but man, I was just so moved. There was one pamphlet that was um, uh, asking people to be vigilant about the, for their safety when walking around parts of San Francisco because um, people who were LGBT or suspected of being LGBT could have even been straight, but be were being beaten up, targeted, and beaten, sometimes killed, because back then, back in the 80s, 70s, 80s, it was it was legal to attack a, a, a gay man, for example, if you felt uncomfortable around them. If you were being made to feel uncomfortable, there were places in this, in this country it was legal to attack, hurt, maim, anything, just because they were gay. Uh, and they made you uncomfortable. I mean, and there was this pamphlet that was warning people that people are being beaten in the streets. And um, and I have been beaten in the streets. It was in Providence back before I moved to Boston. I was a very, very young man. I was just probably about to come out. And uh, it was, I don't know, two or three times, but you walk out of a bar, you walk through a gay neighborhood, and uh, there are a number of men who are just waiting to pounce and beat on anybody that passed by that they thought might be gay. And and uh, it was called fag bashing. Uh, and it, I, I hate to sound like I would use a derogatory term, but it was called fag bashing. And I was I was bashed a number of times. Um, so seeing that pamphlet really brought me back to a, a, a very angry, sad place. Um, the pins, the ACT UP pins and the Keith Haring t-shirt with ACT UP all over them. ACT UP was a, a, a group of um, LGBT, mostly gay, but a lot of lesbians because the lesbians saved us. 
during the beginning and the middle of the the AIDS crisis, HIV, it was the lesbians that were taking care of us. Uh, the, the gay men were too busy dying. Um, but I know real cheery, you know, chipper topic. But ACT UP was a group of people. Uh, back then, they seemed like activists, like militant activists. But what they really were were people who were angry about uh, being dying and the country, the nation, not giving a flying rat's ass and um, angry that we were just being left to die and abandoned because we were gay and not middle America, you know. Um, so it was just a very, very, very scary time. And that's exactly when I was coming out of the closet. <laughs> so uh, seeing that uh, and remembering how difficult things were back then, just really, really brought me back to, a, a, again, a, a place of sadness, of anger, and of pride in that we survived that and elbowed our way into a position of more equality. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. And what, what I'm, I feel bad for the youth of the LGBT community may not understand what we went through any more than I understand what it was like for LGBT people to survive the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. Um, so really a very emotional uh, emotional place. If you are going to be in San Francisco in the Castro area, definitely make, it, make a point to go visit that museum. Um, oh, one of the most impactful displays was um, uh, a, an audio it was a it was a a section of a recording that Harvey Milk recorded knowing that he was going to be assassinated knowing and who would probably be the person who would kill him uh, and uh, he recorded a bit um, to be oh, hold on he recorded something to to be played after his assassination. Can you imagine knowing that people hated you so much because of who you were and the threat that you present represented in terms of equality for, for LGBT communities in San Francisco of all places to, to be such a threat to the white heterosexual establishment male establishment that um, you would you knew that you'd be assassinated could you imagine the courage to still get up on those stages and 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 still be elected to office but um, they gave me a little bit of a transcript of some of that recording which I'll read a little bit to you when I get to my hotel room but um, it really really an emotional experience and completely worth the whole um, trip into San Francisco. Uh, so yeah, yeah, a good day, but sad. Um, it is now, oh, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm going to, uh, get back to my hotel room shortly. Um, heat up one of those little, uh, vegetable protein bowls and, uh, maybe take a nap before my flight to Newark tonight. But I definitely want to read some of this to you because it's, it's something else. All right. I'll see you soon. Oh, let's kick off these shoes. Oh, my goodness. Ladies, you know what it feels like when you're kicking off those heels after a long day? Oh, my bunion. But, uh, so I've got this transcript I got at the museum. This is a transcript of uh, the recording that at the museum that you could actually hear from the mouth of Harvey Milk. Now, go on to, um, to um, Wikipedia and just type in Harvey Milk and read the story of, of what happened and um, with some of this, maybe you'll understand really how tragic that moment was in our history. But um, so this is a recording. He was um, at his camera store, which he opened when he first moved to San Francisco from New York. But um, this is Harvey Milk speaking from the camera store on the evening of Friday, November the 18th, 1977. This is to be played only in the event of my death by assassination. Could you imagine Knowing, I fully rec realize that a person who stands for what I stand for, an activist, a gay activist, becomes the target or the potential target for somebody who's insecure, terrified, afraid, or very disturbed themselves. 
knowing that I could be assassinated at any time. I feel it's important that some people know my thoughts. I would love to see every gay doctor come out. I would love to see every gay lawyer, every gay judge, every gay bureaucrat, every gay architect come out, stand up, let the world know. That would be that would do more to end prejudice overnight than anyone could ever imagine. I urge them to do that. Urge them. And the tone he uses when he's saying these things is hopeful, but also resigned. And um, because I don't think he thought it would ever happen, honestly. Come out. It's the only way we will start to achieve our rights. I ask for a movement to continue, a movement to grow. Because last week I got that phone call from Altoona, Pennsylvania, and my election that and my election gave somebody else one more person hope. So somebody must have called him or contacted him, saying that he inspired them to take action as well. Um, one more person hope, and after all, that's what it's about. It's not about personal gain. It's not about ego. Not about power. It's about giving those young people out there hope. You got to give them hope. So that's part of the transcript from the recording he made um, probably 10 days before he was actually murdered in, in – uh, yeah. Um, so as, as you can see, it was a very emotional, e emotional little museum. But the impact is really enormous. Um, there was a movie called Milk that I really need to watch um, because I, I think it uh, – yeah, I need to go watch that movie at some point. So – in the meantime, I need to eat something, have some water, and maybe take a nap. All right. I'll see you later. Hello, Paris. Hello, hello. Will you let me get close to you? Will you let me get close to you? Paris. Hi, Paris. Oh, my goodness. Seven years, that's the first time you've let me get close to you. Oh, thank you for that gift. Oh, sweetie. We just got on the plane. Look at this. Look at the garbage. Look at the garbage. It just continues all the way down the plane. <sighs> hey guys, hi. So uh, a nice layover. A nice layover here in Oakland. Um, I did get back to the hotel room a little early. Watched some uh, HGTV. Had a snack. Took a nice nap. Good long nap. Um, I left the hotel a few minutes early because I was doing nothing. Just sitting in the room waiting. So. I got to the airport a little early, met our two additional crew members, lovely ladies. And uh, yeah, it's such a nice, a nice, a nice day. Really good. And our flight's going to be nice and easy, drama free, knock on wood, 107, 169 passengers for four hours and 38 minutes. So it'll be a nice speedy flight. There's supposed to be some weather around Newark, but there you go. So I will see you in Newark. Hey guys, hi, welcome to Newark. You can see it is a beautiful day. It's not raining, it's not raining at the moment, but it has been raining, it's gonna rain again. Uh, I think we're finally getting our shuttle. We've been here for 25 minutes. Hi. Oh good, all right. Whew. It's been a, it's been a long time. I'll see you at the hotel. Thank you, Newark. <laughs> so happy. So happy. So I'm eating breakfast, right? And this very nice, handsome man. I see him over there. I, th I think he looks happy, but I'm not quite sure. And I'm like, and then he comes over and goes, hi, I wanted to thank you for teaching me how to bid. I mean, he's a flight attendant. Your wife works for us too? Correct. What's her name? Margaret. And you are again? Robert, Margaret, Robert. Like, we have to tell, pr prove to Margaret that Robert and I are here. Look, the bald guys. You just yes, have to throw the a bald guys. guys. Well, nice to meet you. Sir. Nice yeah, to meet you. Ugh, I feel famous. Look familiar to you? Yep. I am in Newark, it seems like, every week these days. It's all right. The hotel's nice. Breakfast is always fantastic. The weather is not. Oh, it's raining. Oh, and this little squirrel. Way down there. See him? Little squirrel. I love squirrels. <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> really? Literally. Squirrel. Um, look at the day, squirrel. 
Um, what a nice breakfast. While I was uh, sitting there with my coworkers, uh, this um, guy with a shaved head, big broad shoulders, goes over, sits down with his breakfast. And I think he looks over and he must have said hi, you know, smiled or said hi to the, the group. And um, I just... It didn't. It didn't register. I wouldn't have thought. Oh, flight attendant, because he looks like as much as a flight attendant as I do, and um, uh, he looked over once more time, and I'm like, huh. And then he's like, hey, you know, um, thanks for teaching me how to bid. He had seen some of my videos. He and his wife did, and uh, she's a flight attendant with us as well. It was just, it was just, it was weird. He's like, hey, do you mind if I take a picture with you? And I'm like, sure, no problem, because people ask. It's very strange. People ask frequently enough, hey, can I get a picture with you? My friend wouldn't believe that I saw you, blah, blah, blah. And um, I'm like, it's weird. Like, I'm the absolute most nobody you're ever going to meet. And people still want pictures of me. He's like, you're not like nobody to everybody. Like you're somebody to your subscribers and stuff. And I, I just, he was very nice. He was very nice. If his wife is watching, he's very nice. What a polite man he is. He was so nice. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess I'm not nobody. Right now I'm hearing Diva <laughs> say something. I hear you, Diva. I hear you. All right. So I am stuffed like a tick. I am so full. They gave us an extra breakfast coupon, which last time I was here, when they did the same thing, I uh, got stuff from the Starbucks downstairs to eat for dinner. But we are here tomorrow morning before, um, and our van time is until 6.20. Breakfast opens at 6. So I think I'm going to eat breakfast again tomorrow morning because I'm so damn full. I think I'm done eating all day. Um, I am going to undress. Bah, bah, bah. I'm going to undress and <laughs> I'm feeling very silly uh, and then take a nap. So I will see you later. Now I am watching Lord of the Rings. It is 3.05 in the afternoon and uh, yeah, it's going to be an indoor day today. It's cold and it's very wet outside. So once again, just hanging out in the hotel room here in Newark. Um, so two things. First off, I don't know if I mentioned... Sybil, who was my chaser uh, yesterday. What an absolutely marvelous person she is. I mean, it was absolutely, I, I mean, it was an honor to fly with her. We had the best time. I really think I had one of the most genuine, heartfelt conversations with her that I, I've had with an adult uh, outside of recovery. I mean, she was amazing. Um, so that was great. Woke up this afternoon to an email from the company asking why we had a delay yesterday. Now, I was a little surprised by this because while there was a short delay, I didn't I didn't talk much about it because it wasn't really an issue. Um, there was an email from the company and apparently the gate agent said that we were delayed in leaving Oakland because I was having giving a pep talk to a passenger. Well, that sounds lovely. That didn't happen. Um, we didn't get, our plane didn't arrive in Oakland until after we were supposed to start boarding our flight. And then the cleaners were on board forever because there was so much trash that you would not believe. So we couldn't start boarding until whenever. I don't know. But the moment the captain gave me the paperwork to close, which is when we close the door, the captain gives me paperwork. I give it to the gate agent. There was no delay. There was no hesitation. He gave it to me. I gave it to her. We closed the door. And then I got this email today saying that it was our fault. We were delayed. So, my mouth got instantly dry and I couldn't even, honestly, I couldn't have spit if I wanted to. I was so irritated. Uh, yeah, there's the word irritated. Take a shot. <clears throat> yeah, it was, it was not the email I wanted to see. I replied with color and detail trying to keep feelings out of it but i probably failed at that but yeah shocking that i got that email but whatever whatever not in my control not in my power so i'm gonna sit and finish watching the lord of the rings and play some video games i've got some uh cuties those little nectarines i mean those little uh uh mandarin oranges things and i bought two of those uh vegetarian bowls so i'll eat that today and 
that's going to be my day here in, in Newark. So I will see you probably tomorrow morning. All right. See you later. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, it's exactly five o'clock in the afternoon. I was lying in bed watching the Lord of the Rings, played some video games, snacked, just lounging in bed in my undies, and I was just bored out of my mind. So I decided to throw all of the clothes in my suitcase on. I'm layering knitwear. I never thought I would layer knitwear, but it actually looks pretty nice. I like this. I'm wearing a pair of shorts, of course, because I'm from New England, and you wear shorts if it's over freezing, but uh, it's actually not that bad. Overcast since it stopped raining, uh, but it's a nice enough day. It's early spring in New England, and the leaves are just popping out. So how nice is that? Very pretty. There's a beautiful park down the road, and I'm walking through a cemetery right now. But yeah, just wanted to get out of the hotel, walk around, get some steps in, and uh, that's it. So. Next time I see is probably tomorrow morning at breakfast. Good morning, guys. Hi. Oh, I hate mornings. But uh, it's 5.50, exactly. I have to run downstairs for breakfast in a moment. It starts at 6. Um, yesterday, our rooms weren't available. I wasn't sure if I mentioned that. So they gave us an extra breakfast coupon, which is very nice. So I'll use that today to grab something good before I get my long day started. Uh, last time I saw you, we, uh, we, I was like the royal we, I was taking a walk. I ended up walking all the way over to Stop and Shop, which is a grocery chain that I grew up with in the Northeast. And uh, I was going to buy a bottle of coffee syrup, which is something apparently is that's not available anywhere else in the country. And uh, they used to sell it. I used to buy it here all the time. And they didn't know what I was talking about. It, I don't know. It's like the apocalypse is beginning. Um, so no coffee syrup for Stephen. I do have a Boston layover next month, so I'll buy some there. That's It's fun. I could probably find it on Amazon too, but I'd rather buy it at the grocery store. Um. Yeah, I think that's it. We're going to fly to Las Vegas today, and then we have a Reno turn, a Burbank turn, something of a turn. Uh, it's called a penalty lap or a victory lap, depending on your mood. Uh, but yeah, let's go get breakfast, and I will see you later. And by the way, I'm almost done with Cloud Surfer Andy's uh, weekly vlog. I watch her every time. I just love her. She's getting married. Did I tell you that? She's getting married. I'm so excited. Honestly, I cannot wait for more wedding content. Andy, by the way, just, just letting you know. <laughs> oh, a very happy looking breakfast. Asparagus, bre uh, bacon, potatoes, and some eggs with salsa and some juice. Very happy with this. I got random through security again, but again, they're so quick here. It's not really a huge issue. So Fine. I'm going to see if I have time for coffee. There's not a real line. That's good. I'll see you soon. Guys, hi. Welcome to Vegas. I wish we were staying, but we have to do a Reno turn. Uh, this leg to um, Vegas from Newark was five hours and 20 minutes, five hours and 40 minutes, something like that. I don't know. But some of you are out there thinking, Stephen, this video is too long. Why are you still talking? I know, it's welcome to my channel. I don't understand how some flight attendants will do a video about a four-day work trip or an international trip and have it be 12 minutes long. And half of that is a sponsored commercial for some like eyeglass company or something. I don't, I don't know how they how they do it. A four-day trip for me is it's a fairly long video, but um, I'm making it longer by talking. So um, we are going to be going to Reno after this and back. We should be back here in Las Vegas by 3.30, 3.40 in the afternoon. Uh, really nice flight. Really wonderful passengers. One baby that just charmed the pants off of me. Absolutely beautiful baby. Um, yeah, no, no drama, no trauma. Super easy. My crew is amazing. Uh, my chaser today is Katie, and she is. Uh, she's been here ten years, and I just love her. She is. She is fantastic. Um, yeah, really nice day so far. Just wish we didn't have to do this turn because a turn even with just an hour flight, is still four or five hours, so. Boo-hoo. Um, I will see you later. Woo. Hey, guys. How are you? I am trying to keep my eyes open. Today has been very long, and the last two legs have been um, sleep-inducing. The 
the turbulence gently rocking us. Oh my God, I wanted to die. But uh, I just got to the post office here at the airport. Somebody sent me, if you can see that, somebody, well, it, it, it says Eleanor. My cat Eleanor sent this Easter card to me. There's no human being who wrote anything on there, but apparently the card is from Eleanor. So whoever you are, you're very sweet. That was very nice. Uh, I'm gonna head back to the car and then um, I guess there's one more thing to talk about. I know it's a very long video, but it's it's something I wanna bring up because today is a very big day for me and uh, I will chat with you later on in the car. Um, I think I'm gonna eat something before I get there because I'm like this. So I'll see you soon. Hey guys, hi, welcome home, welcome home. So I don't know why I was so wiped out by today. The trip wasn't very long. We just had a very early show in Newark. Thank goodness I had that amazing breakfast. I don't think I showed it to you, but it was delicious. Uh, and then um, got back to Las Vegas a few hours ago. Um, stopped at Wendy's for a small chili and a Coke Zero just to have something in my belly and a little bit of caffeine just to get me home. I'm going to be taking a very nice nap with the cats in a few minutes. Uh, stopped off at the P.O. Box. I uh, purchased three items uh, from uh, eBay recently. One was a pair of cufflinks. I got them super, super cheap. I think I paid $8 including tax, including shipping, and they were adorable. I got a um, John Barvados or John Barvados, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, tuxedo shirt, a black tuxedo shirt, and I need some cufflinks, and so I got some great cufflinks for those, that shirt. Um, got a pin, of course, a lapel, uh, brooch or a pin that I really liked a lot. I think I won that auction for 99 cents plus shipping, so very happy. And I got this chain, which is a duplicate of the David Yerman chain that I usually wear, the three millimeter box length. It's a duplicate of a David Yerman chain. Although it's um, plated in rhodium, so it's not gonna tarnish the same way that the David Yerman would, but that's okay. I wanted to still continue wearing my helmet that was made for me by a former coworker at Saks. Uh, but I didn't, I just, it was always right here. It was always like right there. Hey, look at this. Uh, so now I can actually have it in my shirt and still wear it for luck and health as I've been wearing it, but it's not like omnipresent, you know? Um, so very happy with those purchases. And um, yeah, now I just came home, gave the cat some treats, some love, and right now they are in the garage. I closed the door behind them so that the air conditioning didn't cool off the garage because it's 86 degrees outside <laughs> right now. But uh, yeah, I'm feeling much more awake and conscious than I did when I was at the airport. Um, I think I told you there was one more thing I wanted to share with you uh, about today that was pretty important to me. I was thinking of doing a whole separate video about it, but I don't, I don't know if I want to. Maybe I'll make a post separately. Uh, but um, April 19th, does anyone know what April 19th is? Because you know I have so many anniversaries, like good ones and bad ones, right? I have so many because I've lived such a life and I'm, I'm getting older. Um, so does anyone remember what April 19th is? Anybody? Yeah, it's a bad day in my history. It was, um, it's the day my brother died. Now I made a video about um, visiting my brother's, um, where he died. And I'm not quite sure how I titled it. If you're interested, it is a very triggering video and you'll you'll never see me more emotional you'll probably never see me cry as hard as I, I well unless it was about my cat Claire I cried harder but the video I think is titled something like visiting the place my brother died or something like that with my name you'll be able to find it I maybe if I can find it I'll tuck it in the uh comment section below or the description box I should say uh but today was the the uh, is the 40 the 47th anniversary of him dying. Um, and uh, for those people who didn't know or didn't see that video or aren't interested in watching the whole video, um, my brother and I were playing on the sidewalk and we were in Providence, playing on the sidewalk and um, I got bored. Uh, I was eight, I had just turned eight. My birthday was March, this was April 19th. So it was a month after I turned eight. Mark was about to turn six, but he was a very small 
small kid. We were both so small. We were both so little. Mark, was, Mark stayed on the sidewalk playing. I decided to climb into the V of this little mini sapling. It was really like a stool. I was like sitting on a stool that happened to be a tree. And, um, you know, I don't remember the truck starting or moving forward, but it backed up over my brother, Mark. Again, he was so tiny, wearing this bright yellow jacket that did not stay yellow. Um, and uh, the truck backed up and uh, drove over Mark's head and his torso. And uh, I watched this and I fell out of a tree, of course, and ran screaming to the um, fire station that was at the corner uh, of the block that we lived on. And uh, in the video that I, I made about visiting his uh, place where he died, um, I visited where that, that uh, fire station is. I walked around the park uh, across the street from where we lived and like nothing has changed since then. 47 years, nothing has changed. Uh, but um, yeah, so it was, it was a very emotional visit when I went down there. I might go back at some point in the near future um, in the next, you know, I don't know when, just because, um, it does feel like a sacred place to me where, where he died. Cause my whole entire future changed right there. Um, uh, but yeah, so today is Mark's anniversary of having passed. His birthday is, I think it was June, is it June 21st or June 22nd? But, um, yeah, so that was his, that's his birthday. But today to me is a much more important day because I, I was there and witnessed it and it changed me so much, you know, but so, um, yes, I wanted to just make a comment and mention Mark today because it's such an important day and he, you know, I still think of him so often. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there we are. There we go. I meant to say ending the video on, on a bright note, right? <laughs> as usual uh, but um, just if you if you're a prayer kind of person or you think about things like that send up a little prayer for Mark um, I still wish him so much peace and I wish him I wish he were with me you know I, I don't always feel it but I, I I wish it I wish it I really do wish I I felt him close to me but after 47 years you must be bored hanging around me right So I'm going to let the cats back in the house because I'm sure they're done exploring the garage. And then I think I'm going to make this video. And I think the three of us are going to take a little nap. And I might have a little cry, which is what feels like it's happening in a minute. So I'm going to let you go. Thank you for joining me on another wild random ride. Um, I Just to reinforce what I said earlier, I'm sure I said it. I always, I always keep talking. I tell you I'm going to, I'm going to finish. And I keep talking. Um, I still don't know how these other flight attendants film a four-day trip in a, like a 10, 12, 15-minute long video when half of that video is sponsored. One day, I'm going to have a conversation with you guys about why you will never see a sponsored video on my channel. Uh, and um, I'd like to think it's a service to you, but I also, whatever. I'll make a video about that one day. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for wishing... Uh, and thinking about my brother Mark uh, today. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later. All right, bye. Fly safe.